Hello, everyone. I'm so honored to be with you to communicate the academic questions and ideas. The topic of my lecture is static force touch detection based on artificial neural networks, and it will be developed in the following two parts. First, let's look at the research background and status. We know that uh, touch interactivity is of significance in the area of human-machine interface. The development of touch sensing changes the conventional manner of controlling electronic and mechanical systems, thus boosting HMI efficiency. And in modern electronics, finger touch-based interactivity is mostly utilized for learning users' intentions and providing user feedback. So our research uses fingers to perform contact touch and detects the static force during the touch process. Uh, to present, uh, the user's touch behavior can be divided into two- and three-dimensional touch. Factors affecting two-dimensional force touch include finger-related parameters and touch attitudes. And in three-dimensional touch events, two types are mainly involved, which are dynamic and static force touches. For the former, fruitful research results have been obtained. Nevertheless, for the latter, literature is rare due to the pulse and hysteresis issues introduced during static force touches. So, to further improve the accuracy of the machine's recognition of force level, the static force under discrete and continuous touch conditions is investigated in detail. Next is our research content and results. For discrete force touch detection, the volunteer was asked to perform three force levels from light to heavy according to its habit. Each touch event lasts 10 seconds with an interval of 2 seconds. The experimental protocol is given on the left, and figure 1 shows a typical result. The volunteer shows the following characteristics when performing different levels of static force touches. First, when the force level is changed each time, the static force will appear an obvious pulse and then gradually achieve stabilization. Second, the peak value of the pulse varies with different force levels. The pulse value is low or the pulse even does not appear when the force is light. However, when the force becomes heavier, the peak value becomes high. Third, the width and decreasing slope of the pulses are different. The pulse width of the middle force is the longest and the decreasing slope of the heavy force is the largest. Fourth, the stability of different force levels is different. In the case of the heavy force, the jitter is more obvious when the static force is applied in a single time, and the fluctuation of the stable value is also larger when the experiment is repeated. The figure on the right shows the four characteristic values of static force touches. The above phenomenon reflects the individual's ability to control static force. When applying life force, the volunteer has a strong ability to control it, and the controllability gradually decreases with the boost of force level, which makes it more difficult to maintain the heavy level force, and the force touch will be more unstable. Next, we detect the continuous force touch, in which the static force behaves differently similar to the measurement steps of the discrete force touches. The time interval between two different force levels is cancelled, and the static force level is continuously applied from light to heavy and then to light. It demonstrates that the pulse still appears during the conversion of force level. When the force level increases, a positive pulse appears, and when the force level decreases, a negative pulse appears. The amplitude, the slope, and the width of the pulse are related to the force level. In the process of force increase or decrease, the same force level may have different stable values, which causes hysteresis and leads to force misregistration. To solve the 
about problems. We choose a fully connected neural network of the multilayer perception type to establish the mapping relationship between pulses and their stable values under different force levels, thus improving the efficiency and accuracy of human-machine interaction. In the above experiment, the three levels of discrete force were tested 1,000 times, so there are 3,000 samples for different inputs and outputs. The fitting performance of the model is evaluated by the mean square error between the output value and the target value. After comparing different algorithms and functions, we select the levenberg marquardt algorithm for parameter op optimization and hyperbolic tangent as the activation function. The key factors affecting the complexity and the time cost of neural networks are the number of hidden neural layers and nodes. In theory, the more nodes, the smaller the MSE of model training. When the number of nodes is greater than 5, the model can show better performance in the experiment. So to maximize the accuracy of neural network training and improve the fitting performance of the model, we use 10 hidden layer neural nodes. In this case, when the hidden neural has 1 to 4 layers, the MSE is Increases as the number of layers increases, and then fluctuates around the stable value. The more hidden layers, the more calculations, and the, the higher the time cost. So we choose five layers of hidden neurons. In this case, the errors between the output and target are mostly concentrated within 0.2 newtons, and the correlation coefficient r is greater than 0.95 which indicates that there is a good correlation between pulses and the corresponding stable values, and the fitting accuracy is relatively high. And for continuous force, we use the same model structure and parameters to train 5,000 samples. The final errors between input and output are mostly within 0.3 newtons, and the mean square error is greater than the training result of discrete force. These results indicate that the volunteer's ability to control continuous force is weaker, and the input fluctuates more. Real-time performance is also a crucial issue when the computer is interacting with humans. In the process of applying static force, the characteristics of the pulses obtained by the machine are constantly changing, thus leading to various recognition results. So we also verified the models under different input times, and the experimental results are shown in Figure 10. It shows that there is a contradiction between the real-time performance of static force detection and its accuracy. In the pulse duration, the AN's recognition errors are 1.99 newtons and 2.15 newtons, and the relative errors are 17.72% and 19.12%. After the pulse disappears, the AN's recognition error is 0.54 newtons and the relative error is 4.84%. Therefore, to make the static force detection more accurate, the machine's recognition of the force level should be carried out after the pulse peak appears for a period of time. In summary, we have extracted the key parameters of the pulses and systematically analyzed the pulse and hysteresis in the static force touch detection. After carefully designing the AN based on the specific characteristics of the static touch events, both the average output error of force level recognition within 0.15 newtons and the relative error in real time within 5% have been controlled experimentally. That's all. Thank you.